this ought to be interesting. Welcome back to my channel and a very special welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen. I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach who has lost and maintained a 140 pound weight loss and it is Friday so it's weigh in day. I've got some updates for you and we're talking about Weight Watchers. Weight Watchers is changing again. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about what the alleged changes are. When is all of this going to happen? What are my thoughts? We're going to talk all about it. So if you're excited, give this video a big, huge thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not. Turn your bell on because I upload five videos every single week. And Friday is always weigh-in, update. We'll talk about what's going on in Weight Watchers in the world together on Friday. So make sure your bell's on so you don't miss any of my videos. Down in the description box, I will have nutrition coaching. Highly, highly recommend those personalized macros and calories. That is what I follow to lose and maintain my 140 pound weight loss, as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching for questions, accountability, or to talk with me directly. Links, discounts to my favorite things, and come join our Facebook group. It's free, it's supportive, we would love to have you are all down in that description box. So we got a lot to talk about, let's jump in. So first let me give you a quick, let me give you some quick updates. I don't really have a lot of updates for you this week. And then we're gonna talk about Weight Watchers. That's really what I wanna focus on for today's video. So update wise, like I said, there's not a whole lot going on. Last Friday I mentioned that we had started framing on our house. That was incorrect. I misunderstood what our superintendent told us for timeline. So I wanted to make sure that I gave you accurate information on our house. So we actually had the foundation poured for our house yesterday, Thursday. So that foundation has to dry, obviously. It also has to get inspected. So they're not going to be starting the framing on our house until this next week. So I apologize. I misunderstood. I was off on my dates, off on my weeks. Nonetheless, we're starting framing this next week, which is really, really exciting. Like I said, I want to have the majority of the house framed before I release the next video. I've been filming a lot. I have a lot coming your way in the next vlog. It's going to be a really good one. And I'm so excited to see the house come together. It's really an exciting time, especially once it gets framed and then we see the walls come up. And then, like I said, the interior is the part I'm most excited for. And that is quite a bit down the ways before that's going to happen. But I apologize for giving you misinformation on where we are in the house build. I head to Hawaii here in just 10 days, which is crazy to me. I actually just paid Rachel for the car rental. I'm really excited. Rachel and I are getting tattoos on this Hawaii trip, matching tattoos. So I'm going to be paying the deposit for that this week. I'm just really excited for the trip. I am excited to go to Hawaii. I love Hawaii. It's my favorite place to travel, especially with Rachel and Kelly. We just have such an amazing time. I of course miss Lola a lot and I'm of course miss and I worry about her the whole time that I'm gone especially as we're navigating this remission journey crossing our fingers hoping that it's a long long very very long forever remission journey. It just it stresses me out to leave her and she doesn't really do very well when I'm gone. She's typically fine during the day but at night she really misses me. That's when we typically spend the evening together watching TV. She sleeps with me every single night so I just feel this little sense of guilt leaving her and this is a longer trip I'll be gone actually about seven days I'll be gone six nights which is a lot and I'm just I'm worried about leaving her for her health I'm worried about leaving her because she misses me it's one of the things about traveling that's stressful for me but I'm excited for the trip and I definitely need it it's been a very stressful couple of years between losing diesel Lola being diagnosed with lymphoma building the new house, just life lifing. So it's been quite a stressful year. So I definitely need this little getaway. I just have to remind myself that Lola's with daddy and everything will be fine. It just, it worries me, especially being so far away from her for so long. But I'm excited for my trip nonetheless. I will be giving you an update this next Friday on content while I'm gone. I'm still figuring out, am I going to have content when I'm gone? Am I going to just essentially take that time off from uploading content? So I'm that's kind of where I'm at. I'm not really Really sure what that's going to look like. So next Friday, I'll give you an update on that. We had so many trick-or-treaters on Halloween. They love the little packs of pretzels. They love the candy, the little gummies from Trader Joe's. I'm definitely going to miss handing out candy to the kids on Halloween. We don't get trick-or-treaters where we're moving. It's a 55 and older gated community. That's It's a manned gate 24 hours a day. So we don't get any trick-or-treaters. So I'm going to miss that about this house. Luckily, my amazing friend Melissa, who lives in my same community I live in now, said come to my house for Halloween. 
Halloween next year because her husband takes her kids trick-or-treating and then Melissa and I can hand out candy. I just love handing candy out to the kids and I had so much fun yesterday. We had hundreds of kids. It was, it was wonderful. My healthy food eating is going really, really well. Everything's just going really well as far as my eating and my exercise go. So I really have honestly nothing to complain about. So let's talk about Weight Watchers because a lot of things have come to light. I've received so many DMs on Instagram and in my Facebook group. I've gotten comments on YouTube about the changes that are coming to Weight Watchers. Now, for the record, I do not work for Weight Watchers. I track my Weight Watcher points once a week. I do not attend Weight Watcher workshops. The information that I'm sharing with you is all alleged, however, however, it has been somewhat verified. Now, all of the specific details of the changes may change, but the information that I have, I feel is pretty concrete on what's happening come right now, the beginning of November. This information, like I said, came from some of my subscribers. I also got some of this information from my good friend D over on Dish with D. I will link her channel down below for you. So let's talk about it. I've got a list here going on. I also have a message from one of my subscribers about the changes coming to Weight Watchers. So we know that Weight Watchers likes to change their program about every two years, and it's been a couple of years since they've changed their program. We know that they introduced their GLP-1 semi-glutide about a year ago. Now they're releasing their own branded semi-glutide. I did a full video on that, on my thoughts, kind of what's happening with the weight loss medication with Weight Watchers. So I'll link that video if you missed it. That's not what I wanna focus on today, I want to focus on these changes. So here is what is allegedly happening with Weight Watchers. They are going to be bringing in some more zero point foods. Now, if we didn't already have enough zero point foods, they're going to bring us more. And supposedly there's a hundred plus additional zero point foods coming to Weight Watchers. Things like lean red meat, lean pork, and potatoes. Now, this is a little concerning to me because I always say that there is not a single food, not a single one in the world that has zero calories. So there really shouldn't be a single food in the world that has a zero point value. All foods have calories to them. So with bringing in a hundred plus more zero point food, I feel like that's a little bit of a slippery slope for people. Weight Watcher says these foods have zero points. You can eat as much of these zero point foods as you want and they're still zero points. Now they do say on the flip side, you should stick to a serving. But even if you don't stick to a serving of zero point foods, it's still zero points. But all of these foods have calories. And in fact, some of these foods are pretty calorically dense like potatoes, red meat. These have quite a bit of calories. Beans can have quite a bit of calories, quite a bit of carbohydrates. So I find it interesting interesting that they're giving us more zero point foods. Typically, if we have a weight problem, besides it being genetic, it's because we overeat and giving us a hundred more zero point foods for us just to overeat seems a little bit counterproductive to me. And I don't really believe in zero point foods to begin with, because like I said, all foods have calories, all foods have macros, whether it's protein, carbs, fats, or both. So I don't really agree with the zero point foods. And I think it's odd that they're giving us a hundred plus more zero point food. So what foods are actually going to have points associated with them? I'm assuming these are going to be a lot more of the processed foods, which makes sense. Meat, potatoes, these come from the earth. They come from animals. So it makes sense why these would be zero points. I just find it I find it a little bit concerning that there's so many more potential zero point foods because like I said, I don't really believe in zero point foods wholeheartedly to begin with. My other issue with zero point foods, and I find this a lot with people that I coach, is that they'll eat zero point foods all day long and then they'll save up all of their points and indulge on pizza, cake, candy, chips, whatever they decide to indulge on. And what's happening with that is you're still eating calories all day long. Like I said, all of these zero point foods have calories and then you're eating all of these additional calories for your points during the day. So what's happening with that calorie deficit? And sometimes with zero point foods, we end up overeating our calories. And since Weight Watchers doesn't give us calories, we don't know how many calories we're actually consuming. And the only way to lose weight is to be in a calorie deficit. So if we're eating zero point foods all day that have calories, and then we're eating these high calorie foods for our points every day, we can put ourselves out of a surplus, which means we're going to gain weight instead of lose weight on the Weight Watchers program. So that's just another concern that I have with zero point foods. I'm really curious to see what are the other foods that they're going to assign a zero point value to. Are they going to be foods that we would never eat, like random weird foods that we would never reach for? Or are they going to be foods that can be overeaten or concerning, like lean red meat, 
pork, and potatoes. With the inclusion of more zero point foods, what I've been told is that our daily points will not change. So that is interesting to me as well, because right now, if you get these set number of daily points and you get these set zero point foods, now I'm going to give you more zero point foods, but I'm going to give you the same amount of points. What's that again doing for the calories that we're consuming every day? And Weight Watchers doesn't give us calories, so we don't even know that we're in a calorie deficit. Now I will say that I would say 90% of people under eat on Weight Watchers. It's a very low calorie diet, which is very detrimental to our overall health and our weight loss. So I don't know how common it is to overeat on Weight Watchers. However, I have several coaching clients who were overeating on Weight Watchers with those zero point foods. And now we get the same daily points, but we have more zero point foods. So how's all that gonna play out? Another thing I find interesting is that supposedly Weight Watchers is going to show us macros. So they're going to show us protein, fats, and carbohydrates, and supposedly sodium and fiber as well. But what they're not going to give us is calories. And here's why. Weight Watchers is a business. And if Weight Watchers gave us the calories of all the foods that we're eating, all the macronutrient profile, all of the points, why would we need the program? We could just use a free calorie counting app and get the same results. So because Weight Watchers is a business, of course they're not going to tell us the calories. They are supposedly going to give us the macros. Now, here's the thing about the macros. So I received a message from one of my subscribers about Weight Watchers introducing macros and she asked if I had heard about it and if I knew any of the details. And then she sent me a message kind of giving me more details on the macros. When you track a food item in the Weight Watchers tracker, the macros are at the bottom of each item. You have to scroll to the bottom of the item to see the macros. The totals are not posted anywhere on the day. So if you wanted to keep up with how many of each macro you're consuming, protein, carbs, and fat, you would have to write them down. Jack, that's not worth it when there's apps out there that actually show you calories, all of the macronutrients that you're consuming, and you can even use apps like Healthy that will give you points as well. That's where they're making it so exciting that they're including macros, but they're making it really hard for you to know the macros. And did you know that right now, when you click on a food that you track, say an egg, the nutrition information is there, the calories, the protein, the carbs, the fats, but you again have to manually add them up. So they're not really making your life any easier. They're just going to show you the macros at the bottom of the screen, kind of like they do now. Maybe you don't have to click on the food like you do now, the macros will just be there. And of course, they're going to show you sodium and fiber, which is not currently shown in the app. So do I think this is a good idea? Absolutely. You need to know what is making up the foods that you're eating. I will tell you that I have not met a single person who follows Weight Watchers, not a single one, not a single one in the three plus years I've been a weight loss and nutrition coach that eats enough protein because they're so focused on low point foods and a lot of the low point foods don't contain any protein. Again, if using your points for processed foods, buying those two point bars at your Weight Watchers meeting or those little packs of snacks, none of those have any nutritional value and none of those have any protein. So what I'm finding is when people come to me wondering why they're not losing weight on Weight Watchers, they're eating 50 grams of protein every day, which is about a third of what most people should be eating. So I do appreciate that supposedly they're now going to share the macros of the foods, but they're not going to give you the calories. So here we are again, not knowing how many calories we're eating. And the only way to lose weight is to be in a calorie deficit. The only reason Weight Watchers works, you guys, is because you're in a calorie deficit. And oftentimes a severe, unhealthy calorie deficit, but a calorie deficit nonetheless. And of course, being a business, they're not gonna give us the calories. So do I think it's great that they're giving us the macros? Absolutely. Do I think it's really beneficial to you? No, because you don't have the calories and you have to manually add them up. Where if you simply used a calorie tracking app like Lose It or My Fitness Pal, it does all the work for you. It's going to add it all up, tell you how much you've used during the day, how much you have left, how much protein, carbs, fats, everything you've eaten. I actually track my fiber and lose it as well. So it gives me a running total of my fiber. Now, obviously these calorie tracking apps aren't going to give you points. But if you're focused on calories and macros, you don't need to track your points too. You don't need to do two programs. You don't need to make your life harder. Keep it simple. Whatever works for you, do it. If it's Weight Watchers, just do Weight Watcher points. If it's macros and calories, just do macros and calories. You don't need to do both 
programs. So supposedly these changes are going to be released, given out to us around the beginning of this month, November, and they will go into effect in December. Now, like I said, all of this is alleged. This is all information from Dish With D, and she actually had an email from a credible source where she got this information. And again, I've had a few people reach out to me on the changes happening with Weight Watchers as well. Where these particular people are getting their information, I do not know. And it sounds like Weight Watchers, like I said, is going to continue offering GLP-1 medication and in fact, they just branded their own GLP-1 medication, which again, I have that video in the description box. I talked about it in depth, so I don't wanna go over that in today's video again, but that is something that they're going to continue. So in a nutshell, they are going to give us more zero-point foods. They're going to allow us to not conveniently track our macros. There is no calories going to be given. We do not think that the daily points are going to shift, and this should all go into effect late November, early December. So let me know what you guys think of these changes. Do you think these are good changes to Weight Watchers? Do you think that this is going to get people back to the Weight Watchers program? I will tell you, I will not be going back to solely counting Weight Watcher points. I do not eat enough on the program. I think their maintenance program leaves a lot to be desired. It's very low calorie for maintenance. If you watch my What I Eat In A Day videos, I'm at least 10 to 20 points over my 28 points that I'm allowed for me to get in my protein and calories. And if you are new to my channel, I actually started tracking calories and protein only. I didn't even look at carbs and fats at the beginning of 2021. And in the year of 2021, I lost 90 pounds. And since then have lost 140 pounds and maintained that weight loss for two years, simply counting calories and protein. Now I take a little closer look at carbs and fats for maintenance, as well as for building lean muscle and getting the maximum effect of my workouts. But truly calories and protein is all you need to focus on to reach your weight loss goals. So for me, the Weight Watchers program just isn't something that not sustainable for me. I don't find it healthy. And even with all of these changes that they're making, it's definitely not something that would work for me in the long term. I don't think there's much, I don't think there's enough being added, enough changes being made to make it a program that makes sense for me. But I want to hear from you. If you're a Weight Watchers member, let me know. If you track macros and calories, let me know. If you are curious as far as how many calories are you supposed to eat, because Weight Watchers isn't going to give us that information, and you want to know what is should you shoot for protein-wise, fats and carbs. Even if you're going to follow Weight Watchers, you still should know this information. You should know how many calories you should eat, how much protein, fats, and carbs. That is the service I offer. It's called Personalized Customized Macros and Calories. It's a very small investment for something that will literally change your weight loss game, whether you're following Weight Watchers or not. So I will link personalized macros and calories down below, invest in yourself. Even if you're going to follow the new Weight Watchers program, even if you're currently on Weight Watchers, if you're coming back to Weight Watchers, have the knowledge in the bank of what you're supposed to be eating. So when Weight Watchers gives you macros, you make sure they're aligned with what's going to work for you in the long term for weight loss. So I find this interesting. And like I said, I don't think it's enough to bring a lot of people back, to be completely honest. In fact, Weight Watchers has really dropped off the map. Just these structured diets in general have really dropped off the map because people have realize that they're not sustainable long-term. And one thing I want you to think about with Weight Watchers, and I am not bashing Weight Watchers. I'm not bashing Weight Watchers at all. I still count my points once a week. I still follow a lot of the Weight Watchers social media. But one thing about Weight Watchers that I really want you to remember is that it is a business. And if every person lost all their weight on Weight Watchers, if the program really worked for everybody and they lost all their weight, Weight Watchers would be out of business because what happens is people lose weight on Weight Watchers and then they end up gaining it back because it's not sustainable for most people. And that's all diets in general. That's just not Weight Watchers. That's diets in general. Even GLP-1 weight loss medication isn't sustainable for most people. It's been proven time and time again that if you go off of the medication, it's likely you'll gain all of your weight back or at least the majority of your weight. So I always say, whatever you do to lose weight, you have to do that to maintain your weight loss. So you have to find a program that's sustainable for you. For me, that is counting calories and focusing on protein. That is obviously sustainable for me. I've sustained my weight loss for two years. I've lost all my weight doing that. So again, find what is sustainable for you, Weight Watchers or not. So those are the Weight Watchers updates. Those are what's happening new with Weight Watchers. Again, let me know down below what are your thoughts. And now let's quickly talk about my weigh-in for the week. I've been following my trying to focus on 80% whole foods, 20% fun foods. I've been really focused on that. I've been tracking my food most days. And when I stepped on the scale today, I weigh exactly the same as I weighed last week. So I maintained my weight loss to the ounce, which I'm grateful for. That is fantastic. I even had candy on Halloween, which was yesterday. So 
even being able to indulge a little bit on Halloween candy and sweet treats, I was able to maintain my weight loss for the week and I feel really good about that. I am currently in maintenance. I am just trying to restructure the foods that I'm eating a little bit for satiety and for lean muscle and for getting the most out of my workouts, but I am in maintenance mode. So the fact that I maintain my weight is fantastic, especially about a week, week and a half out from a vacation to Hawaii. So now I want to hear from you. Let me know your thoughts on the Weight Watchers changes. Let me know how was your week. Did you gain? Did you lose? Let me know everything down below. I can't wait to hear from you guys. And let me know what you're following for weight loss. Is it Weight Watchers, macros and calories, some other program? Let us know down below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. Have a wonderful Friday and I will see you in tomorrow's grocery haul.